the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed for ever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed.
For this is the word of promise, At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay? of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles? As he saith also in Ozi, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaias also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaias said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or, Who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Esaias is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. May God help us to be doers of the word.
God and hope is vanished away. Our plans and dreams get lost, it seems. Looks like trouble will be here to stay. Oh, but no, we stand in here, my friend. He is going to help you find your way. Oh, is God's only son, and Jesus has come to give you the victory today. Oh, our Lord, our Lord, till I reach the end of his body. Tell me, our Lord, oh, our Lord, our Lord, till I see a triumphant song. Although my tears made your full night, surely joy. Come in the morning. So let the wind blow, the storms come and go. On the east, no matter how long. Oh, how long? How long? Tell me how long. How long till I reach the end of this Yes, man, your for the night, surely joy will come in the morning. So let the winds blow, the storms come and go, we make it. Praise the Lord. Aquaibum. God bless the people. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the wonders of the cross. Today, tomorrow, all these days together, wonders in your life. And everything. That the enemy has planted in your life will be rooted out in Jesus' name. A miracle is coming your way. What are you? Salvation today. Healing today. Deliverance today. And power in every one of our lives. And for all our brethren and all people joining us online everywhere. Get ready, something will happen that had never happened. Wonders of the cross in every life, even from this moment, in Jesus' name. Blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will open. And those who have been destroyed by the enemy, enemy of your life, enemy of your soul, today, the Lord is going to bring you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you for Christ. He was born. He lived a sinless life. He went to the cross of Calvary for every one of us. And I pray, Lord, Lord, those wonders coming from the cross of Christ will be for everyone even here tonight in jesus name 
as you are touching us here, transforming us here, we pray that all over the world, for everyone connected, you connect them with your power. And we'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin talking about Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Healer, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, the all in all for us, we're going to start with the words of Jesus Himself. And it's in John chapter 3 reading from verse 14 here is jesus talking to you and you want to clear every hurdle between you and christ and you look at yourself that everything that jesus said the power that he manifested when he was here on earth he'll manifest in your life i didn't hear your amen we're looking at John chapter 3, verse 14. It said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then he tells us in verse 15 that whosoever, whosoever here, there, anywhere, everywhere, whosoever believeth in him, that means believes in him and keeps on believing in him should not perish i will not perish you'll not perish in jesus name but remember those who will not perish are the people that believe in him and they put their faith and their trust and their confidence in christ only in christ as their savior if you have not done that before you are going to do it tonight and then the promise of God and the power of the Lord will be manifested in your life. He said that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And then he gives us the verse in verse 16. The verse everybody should know. The verse everybody should embrace. The verse everybody should accept. And the verse everybody should link up with and say that is mine. He said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's the word again, that whosoever is telling you tonight, he loves everyone and is no respecter of persons. You are coming from the east or from the south. You are coming from the west or from the north. You are coming from here, Africa, or you are coming from America. Anywhere you find yourself, it says that whosoever believeth in him, in him, in him. You single him out. It's above all. It's the only savior. It's the only redeemer. It's not Christ and my religion. Christ and my tradition. Christ and my idols. Christ and my philosopher. Christ and my psychiatrist. Christ and any other person. Christ and Christ alone, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. Are you ready for that? Everlasting life, abundant life, real salvation in the Lord, and the life of Christ in man. The life of God in man. The life that only Christ can provide. And he came from heaven. He came to this world. And he came to provide that for you. I congratulate you tonight that you are there. And you fit in your name and your identity to that whosoever. And that whosoever will become meaningful in your life. As you turn away from everything of the past. And you turn to the Christ 
the Savior that is being presented to you, and you say, he's mine. It's mine. I embrace him. I believe him. I accept him. And I have my faith and my confidence only in him. Salvation has come tonight. Healing has come tonight. Deliverance has come tonight. I'm talking to you today on total healing for everyone through his cross. Total healing for everyone Everyone there without exception. Everyone there without any partiality. Whatever you are going through, whatever problem you have, whatever challenge you have, you are that one is coming to tonight. You are part of that everyone. Praise the Lord. A blessing is coming from heaven upon your life. Total healing. Healing for your spirit. Healing for your soul. Healing for your wounds. Healing for you physically. Healing, redemption, total redemption and total recovery for everyone through his cross. Now you see Christ referred to a particular story. And that story said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the one that became, he came from heaven to earth. Son of God, became son of man, so that sons of men will become the sons of God. A transformation takes place in your life because he came, and because you accept, and because you embrace and believe what he did when he came. And so he came down that he might identify with you and then take your sin. That's a great exchange here. It takes your sin that he might give you his own righteousness. And then your status, your stage, your identity, everything is changed, even in the sight of Almighty God in heaven. Somebody give me a good amen. amen. Now, total healing for you total healing for him total healing for her for everyone through his cross i'll read the story to you but then i want to divide that story into three parts number one corruption consequence and confession of habitual secret sin you see, the children of Israel, they came out of the land of bondage. They've been there for centuries. They've been there for many years. And they came, it so happened that their corruption began to manifest. And then the consequence of that corruption. And then eventually they came and they confessed before the Lord. You know, if you are going to have this healing, total healing, heaven sent healing, healing from the cross, it begins with confession. You know, your doctor cannot do much until you say, here is my problem, here is my challenge, here is why I'm having what I'm having. If you keep quiet, I say, I'm all right, when you are not all right, I feel good, when you're feeling the pain, I'm okay when you are not okay. The doctor will not be able to do anything. But when you come and you say, here is my challenge. Here is my problem. And then you confess that corruption of the heart and the consequence of that corruption. Then you go to the next step. Healing will come. Salvation will come. Deliverance will come. A change, a mighty change, a transformation will come in your life. It's coming today. Number two is the compassion and the kill from the cross of the healing Savior. Yes, a Savior. Jesus is a Savior. But it's also the healer. And as we bring those two words together, is the healing Savior. 
and he provided that and procured that for you on the cross of Calvary because of his compassion not your marriage not what you have done could your tears forever flow and your zeal no respite no all these for sin cannot atone he the savior and he alone must save and when you come and you say nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cringe when you organize yourself and you reorientate yourself and you understand no matter who you are no matter what you have done all that cannot bring salvation to you or forgiveness to you or redemption to you when you realize no matter how good supposedly you are how nice supposedly you are how religious supposedly you are how self-righteous supposedly you are when you push all that aside and you say simply to his cross i cringe forgiveness will come conversion will come a new life will come unto you it will have compassion point number two is compassion and cure from christ from the cross of the healing savior and then number three now combustion when you're weak and you become strong combustion when you are guilty and then you are free from guilt that's combustion when you are powerless and you become powerful that's combustion when you are in the dark in darkness and then the lord transforms your life and you come to the light that's combustion when you are going on the wrong road that will lead you to eternal perdition and you turn around and the grace of god lifts you up and then you come to the right road the road that leads to life eternal that's conversion when you are a sinner and now the lord turns you around and changes your life and you become a sick soul a righteous soul and it starts from within that's conversion point number three conversion through the cross of christ our humiliated substitute he became our substitute and he suffered as if he was the one that committed your sin and he takes you away from that and then he makes a great exchange and he gives you his righteousness conversion is coming your way today i said it's coming your way today you will have it in jesus name now I'm going to the story. The story you'll find in Numbers chapter 21. Point number one now is the corruption, the consequence, and the confession of habitual secret sin. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. If you don't have a Bible there, that's all right. I'll read the story to you. It says in verse 4, And the journeyed from Mount Orm by the way of the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. It just saying that as we're moving on in their journey, discouragement came to them. Now, discouragement comes to everybody. And discouragement is not a sin. But what you do as a result of the discouragement, what you say, as a result of the discouragement, how you act as a result of the discouragement. And the, you know, there are people that do some weird things. Some even go to the point of taking their lives. And they kill themselves by discouragement. It is what you do with that discouragement that tells whether you'll be on the right hand side of God or on the left hand side and it says and the people speak against God it says and the people how is that how could everybody begin to speak against God I want you to understand picture yourself as if you're holding a candle and the person by your side holding a candle and they are everybody holding a candle and one person lights 
the candle. Only one person. And then the next one by side lights his candle from his candle. Another one lights the candle from that and from that candle. Before you know what, everybody has light in their candle. Discouragement is like that. It's contagious. You have it, you speak out. What's of discouragement? What's of criticism? And what's of despair? And what's of fear? What does the future hold? Another one will hear and imbibe and get and receive and respond and react with that discouragement. And it goes on and on and on. We're copycats. What we see other people doing, they lie or lie. They're discouraged, they pass it on, we're discouraged. They criticize, we criticize. They fight, we fight. And as copycats, everybody now begins to do everything. That's why the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All those millions of people, thousands of people, when people picked it up and discouraged, what is it? What about this? What about that? And then uh, every other person picks it up. And it says, and the people speak against God and against Moses. They spoke against God. They broke the commandments of God. And then they spoke against Moses, a man, and they broke the commandments of man. You know, everything you do is classified into two parts. One side is God. The other side is man. Moses, man, humanity. That's why the commandments of God are divided into two. The first four relating directly with God. And everybody, without exception, has broken the commandments relating with God. Because it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you look at the commandments of God, you have not loved God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You have not surrendered and submitted to God as your creator the way he wants. You have not thought about God in everything you do like he wants you to do. We have sinned against God like they did and the people speak against God. And the second part, they spoke against Moses. We speak against a fellow man. How many of us have not spoken against father? against our mother, spoken against our teachers, spoken against our principals at school, spoken against the prefect, and spoken against the leaders in communities, and spoken against everyone. We are the angels and the other people, they are the devil. And we say, why is this? If we're careless and we fail our exam, it's the fault of so and so. If we're careless and we fall sick, it's the fault of so and so. If we're careless and we're not making it in the market, it is the fault of so and so. We speak against God. We speak against man now. When we speak against our Creator, when we live against our Creator, when we sin against our Creator, it has consequence. When we speak against man, when we sin against man, when you sin against your neighbor, it has consequence. It says, this word they said, they said, wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt? Everybody was happy when they came out of Egypt. They had been in slavery all those many years, hundreds of years, and they rejoiced. And they even sang when they passed on the Red Sea. But you know, we are creatures of forgetfulness. We always forget what God did for me yesterday, what he did for me last week. I'm only thinking of today. He had, he had fed them all through that time until they came to that point. But now they had forgotten everything. Are you not forgetful? Do you always thank God? He created you. He gave you life. 
He gave you health. He gave you sustenance. He's been taking care of you since you were born. Even to be born into this world, you don't deserve that. But God did that. And every good thing he has done, we're forgotten. They forgot. And then they began to say, why? Have you brought us up out of the land of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They forgot. He, was, he said he was taking them to the land of promise. He was taking them to the land of Canaan. But because of discouragement, they forgot. That's who we are. That's who you are. You're ungrateful. And because of that ingratitude, we talk like this, we talk like that, we forget ourselves. We are temporarily mad. We are insane temporarily. We even get angry against God and get angry against our fellow man. And then they search in, in this wilderness here we are, for there is no bread. There is no bread. Would you remember the edge, heavenly bread, heavenly meal, manna, that same morning? They were telling lies against God. There are people that tell lies against God and against themselves and against humanity, against everybody. It's like nobody has done anything good for me. And then he said, neither is there any water. Neither is there any water. This chapter 21 of Numbers, the Lord had given them water to drink out of the rock. Then, then he said, there's no water. Our soul loathed this light bread. They said there was no bread, and now they are talking about light bread. What I'm saying is, from the story of these children of Israel, their corruption oozed out. Their corruption defiled everything. Their corruption sold them out. But as you point one finger to them, the other fingers are pointing back to you. We're just like that. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned and you come short of the glory of God. What's the consequence of that? Look at verse 6. We're told in verse 6, And the Lord sent fairy serpents among the people. Why? Well, because there is sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. And there is the consequence of our action. That's the judgment of God. The judgment of God came upon them. Would you know all those serpents were there in the wilderness before that time? But because they were walking in the way of the Lord, the serpents couldn't bite them, couldn't do anything to them. But once the cover and once the protection of the Lord left them, then the serpents came up, will say, almost out of nowhere, and began to bite the people, and much people of Israel died. Was that the will of God? No. There are people, any bad thing that happens, I'm sick, that's the will of God. I'm dying, that's the will of God. I'm penniless, that's the will of God. I'm poor, that's the will of God. And I have incurable disease, that's the will of God. I live a licentious life, therefore I have HIV AIDS, that's the will of God. It's not the will of God. We are the people that have caused all those things. And the earlier we confess, the better. And as you confess today, and you forsake your sin, mercy will come to you. Am I talking about somebody there? Where are you? Mercy is coming. Forgiveness is coming. And total healing will come to you in Jesus' name. But you know, we must recognize that we brought all these evil things upon ourselves. Much people of Israel died. You will not die in your sin. I can't hear my people. You, by the grace of God, in the mercy of God, with the compassion of the Lord, as you do the right thing, and you realize it's not God that wants you to suffer. It's not God that wants you to remain in sin. It's not God that wants you to keep on, you know, with all those unprintable things in your life. 
It's your fault. Stop blaming God. That's what they did. Stop blaming Moses. That's what they did. Stop blaming man. That's what they did. Come and say, it's my fault. I allowed this and that and that other thing to make me go the wrong way. I am at fault. I am guilty. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give me a good amen to that. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but he who forsakes, confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Looks like mercy is coming your way. Looks like compassion is coming your way. Looks like a turning around is coming your way. When you come to the Lord and you confess and you forsake, and you say, I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have said what I shouldn't have said. I've gone the direction I shouldn't have gone. I return and I come to the Lord. The mercy of God and the compassion of the Lord and the salvation of God will come upon your life even tonight in Jesus' name. And look at the next verse now. We're told in verse 7, it says in verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses. There was no compulsion. Nobody tied any ropes on their feet and pulled them and said, Come, they realized our problem started when we walked against God, spoke against God, acted against God, sinned against God. And if we're going to have the mercy of God and the compassion of the Lord, then we have to turn around. And they turned around. You are turning around tonight. From your heart, the depth of your heart, you're saying, Oh God, here am I. I want your mercy. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have seen. Look at that. They did start with ah, serpents are biting us. We're dying. That one has died. That one has died. Moses, don't let us die. You know, there are people that start with, heal me, heal me, heal me. I'm having this tumor, heal me. I'm having this blindness, heal me. I'm having this challenge, heal me. They didn't start with that. They started the right way. What brought this on us? What fruit and what seed they were plant and were reaping this evil thing? The need was their sin. They said, we have sinned. Now, they didn't confess the sins of other people. Ah, it's Moses. Moses did not do this in time. That's why we did that. The government did not do this in time. That's why we acted that way. My daddy, my mommy did not do this for me. That's why I acted this way. My wife, uh, you know, did this. That's why I went to commit adultery. My husband did this. And then to retaliate and teach him a lesson that that thing is painful. That's why I went to do that. They didn't confess other people's sins. They said, we have seen when you come to the Lord tonight and you're not confessing the sin of the church the sin of your denomination, the sin of your tribe, the sin of the Pharisees, and the sins of those, uh, you know, professional religious people, leave all that alone. They came and they said, we have sinned. And then they described the sin they committed, for we have spoken against the Lord, and against thee, after that, they now said, Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. That's why Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man, the Son of God, our Messiah, our Christ, the one who came to die for us, they said, He said, Even so. Must he be lifted up on the cross of Calvary so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Today is your day. I 
I said today is your day. If you will come like they came. If you will confess like they confess. If you will turn like they turn. If you will repent like they repented. And you ask for the mercy of God. That mercy will come to you tonight. I come now to point number two. Point number two says compassion and cure. Compassion and cure. Join those two things together. The cure comes because of compassion. Because of the love of God. Because he is not willing that any of us, like any of them, should perish. But that everyone should repent, should turn, and come to life eternal. I'm sure you remember the life and the story of a whole city. Whole city is called Nineveh. All of them had gone the wrong way from the top to the bottom. From the greatest to the least of them. They had gone the wrong way. And the Lord sent Jonah to them. You know the story how Jonah went this way. And the Lord then brought him back. And then he came eventually and said in 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now Jonah did not understand the compassion and the love of God. He thought once God said, the soul that sinneth. It shall die, and they have sinned, and because of that, they will die, and because their cup of iniquity was already full, and because their sin had God brought them to the point of destruction, and because that destruction had been determined from heaven. Because of that, Jonah thought that the age had come for Nineveh. And so triumphantly, he went to declare, he went to announce that the end had come for them. And so he went every day and he told them, 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed. Jonah failed to understand. Jonah failed to accept. Jonah failed to realize. Jonah failed that he didn't have the revelation of God. That God will have mercy upon the people that turned. And so he expected that the moment he had said, 40 days, the name is gone. He was waiting without compassion, without mercy, without the love of God, and without the possibility of any repentance and any recovery. And so he was waiting, they will soon die. But, 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 the mercy of God came from heaven when the king and all the people from the greatest to the least from the most sinful unto those who are just starting the sinful life they repented like it will happen tonight i said like it will happen tonight as you turn like they turned and you're not saying i'm a great man I'm a highly placed man. I'm a popular woman. I'm a religious person. Even though you know that you had sinned against God and against man and you merit eternal destruction. If you are not sitting in your pride and you say, Lord, I come. I'm the guilty one. I'm asking for mercy. I'm asking for compassion. I trust not in myself. I trust in the mercy and compassion and the love of God. Like those people in Nineveh, like they repented and turned, like God had mercy on them. 
it will have mercy on you. What's the person I'm talking about there? Mercy. Help me shout mercy. Help me shout forgiveness. Help me shout compassion. It's coming your way in Jesus' name. And so they came and they told Moses and they said, We have sinned. We want to be forgiven. Now, with the forgiveness, they also wanted healing. They wanted all the bites and all the poison of those snakes to get away from them. God is able. Able to heal. I can't hear your amen. Able to deliver. Able to set free. Able to turn your life around. And tonight is your night. Say, tonight is my night. Tonight is the night of my mercy. Tonight is the night of compassion. Tonight is the night of salvation. Say, say it. Tonight is the night of forgiveness. Tonight it will happen to you. Your life will never be the same again. And then they were also healed. God did something. He told Moses to do something. Here is it. Look at this. And God said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass. That means it will happen. Salvation, it will happen. Healing, it will happen. Deliverance, it will happen. Total renewal, it will happen. It came to pass that everyone that is beaten, remember, all those who have sinned, they were beaten. That's the consequence of sin. That's why they came. That's why they confessed. And that's why God had compassion on them. And it says, everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. I want you to picture in your mind that those children of Israel, and they were beaten by those snakes, and they were dying as a result of their sin, not the fault of Moses, not the fault of Aaron, not the fault of God, their own fault because of their sin and because of their evil but everyone as they look up at the lifted up serpent as God had directed everyone they were not looking at their pain they were looking at the braces serpent lifted up and they were not asking their neighbor to look on their behalf, everyone, wherever they were. And they, they were they spread out in their millions. There were many. And yet, from anywhere, they looked upon the serpent of brass as they looked. Moses didn't have to go and touch them one by one. He didn't have to go and shake them or put anything on them just looking and as they looked they were made whole your own time has come i said your own time has come i remember jesus said with this story exactly as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so the son of man the lord jesus christ will be lifted up on the cross and everyone that looks believingly, everyone that looks accepting, everyone that says that he did for me, that brazen serpent lifted up upon the pole was for me. Everyone without exception that believed and looked up to that brazen serpent was healed. And that is what the Lord is going to do today. Christ has been lifted up. He died on the cross. 
and you remember what he said on the cross he became our substitute he became our healer by his stripes we are healed and so as you look up to the lord and you say he is my savior he forgives all sins and he heals all diseases and it's the same yesterday and today and forever what he did for all the people in days gone by tonight he will do for you and it doesn't matter how old you are how young you are it doesn't matter on what side you are where the serpent had beaten the children of israel anywhere they were all they needed to do was to look the direction of that brazen serpent and total relief and total healing total deliverance will come unto them and tonight that story is going to be repeated Tonight, that salvation is going to come to you. Tonight, that healing is going to come to you. They didn't have to shout. They didn't have to do anything. Already, the serpent was lifted up. And anywhere they were, anywhere they found themselves, the power of the Lord will be connected to them. Anywhere they find themselves, because they did what the Heavenly Father told them to do. Luke on that lifted braces serpent and then all your problems are over and jesus made allusion to that when he said as it was done at that time now that he had died for us now that he had borne our pain now that he had taken our guilt as we look up to jesus christ Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. He will save you. I said, He will save you. That's why the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Then He says, Who forgiveth all thy transgressions. That's what He's going to do tonight. I said, That's what He's going to do tonight. He will do it for you. Everyone that has been convicted of their sin, and you know is the sin that brings evil upon us, upon everyone without exception, and you confess with the willingness to forsake, and then you look up to Christ, the one who died for you on the cross of Calvary. Immediately, forgiveness, salvation will come to you. Can I hear a greater amen? And then uh, David did not only say that he forgiveth all your transgressions, he also said, Who oh, healeth, healeth, healeth all thy diseases. Tonight, healing uh, is coming to you. In the time that Jesus lived here on earth, a leper came and said, If you're willing, you can make me whole. And then uh, the Lord Jesus, our healer, our redeemer, and our deliverer touched him, he became whole. And he's still the same today as he was at that time. His healing uh, will come to you tonight. The centurion came and said, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy. And Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. And the man said, I'm not worthy. I only came because I know you have compassion. And because I know you have mercy. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. And Jesus spoke the word. And the servant was healed. And Jesus Christ, our healer, deliverer, redeemer, is still the same today. He will speak the word to that sickness, infirmity in your life. It will go away in Jesus' name. The Bible records that everyone that came, he healed them all. 
he healed them all and he's coming to you today no matter where you are you are here or you are there in another country anywhere you are as the word comes to you the healing power of the lord will come with that word it will heal you miracle of healing i said miracle of healing as you believe lord i believe Lord, I believe it will happen in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, and it's conversion through the cross of Christ for our humiliated substitutes. The way we should have been humiliated, we are the people that should have died on the cross. We are the people that should have borne the punishment. He was sinless. He was spotless. He was righteous. He was holy. He was heavenly. But we are the people that are earthly. We are the people that are sinful. We are the people that are guilty. We are the people that are condemned. And then he became our substitute. He took our place where we should have been that's where he came and where he was that's where we're going he tasted all the punishment for us he tasted all the suffering for us he tasted all the pain for us that's how we call him our substitute but then, not just ordinary substitutes, humiliated substitutes. Did you see, did you hear how they tied him to the, to the pole and they, and they kind of beat him with many stripes? And there were sharp stones or sharp metal at the edge of those weaves. And he tore his body, tore his flesh. That's why it says, by his stripes were healed and then he went to the cross he carried the cross he fell down he was so humiliated for you now tell me if he has borne all that shame if he has borne all that suffering if he has borne all that degradation all the evil for you as you come and say lord i recognize all that i should have suffered but you suffered for me and you bought that for my sake lord i come he will not reject you he will take you he will remake you he will recreate you he will transform your life and then you'll be able to say i've, I've been to christ he forgave me not only that I came to Christ, he cleansed me. I came to Christ, he, he revived my life and rejuvenated my life, regenerated my life, and I'm not what I used to be anymore. He'll convert you. I said he'll convert you. He'll change your life. And the things you were doing before, he will take that nature that wants to be evil that wants to do evil he'll take that away from you he'll make you a brand new man a brand new woman a brand new boy a brand new girl a brand new husband a brand new wife totally different from what you were before he is able he is willing he will do it tonight in your life conversion through the cross of Christ our humiliated substitute you know you remember where we started let's go back there that's John chapter 3 verse 14 it says and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness because of the sins of the people because of the suffering of the people because of their expressed corruption and they confessed everything they were helpless they couldn't help themselves against the serpents in the wilderness and he said as moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness even so even so even so for the same reason even so for similar people not only for people at that time until the edge of the world for you for me for all even so must 
Look at that word must. There's no other way of forgiveness. The Son of Man must be lifted up. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through the name of Jesus is the only Savior. The Son of Man must be lifted up. It's the only one that can bring us salvation and forgiveness and peace of mind and total turning around is the only one that can change our nature and is coming to you today and when you realize he is the only one only one the works of your hand your self-righteousness cannot save you your activities cannot save you your good works cannot save you and for the evil works you have done before before you did this good work only Christ, our salvation Christ, and Christ alone. Our redemption is in Christ, and Christ alone. The Son of Man must be lifted up. Then it says that whosoever, in verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever believeth in him. You see that word believeth? It was true at the time of Peter and James and John. Believeth is true every day. And those who come to Christ today and you say today, I believe that what believeth goes on in operation. And it will happen to you that whosoever believeth in the first century, second century, until the century in which we are living now, whosoever believeth in him, in him. There are some people that think, you know, my religion will save me, my church going will save me, my paying tithes and offering will save me, my paying the pastor's due will save me, my self-righteousness, external righteousness with inward corruption. My self-righteousness will say, uh -uh, no, in him. You come today and you put your faith and trust and confidence in Christ, your salvation will come. That whosoever, low, high, big, small, educated, uneducated, You've been to church before, you've never been to church, but then you say, today I wake up and I realize that Jesus is my Savior, my only Savior. And as we do that today, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. I will not perish. I will not perish. Why? Because I'm a preacher? Uh-uh. That doesn't say. Why? Because I know a bit of the Bible? Uh-uh. That doesn't say. Why? Because I'm religious? Uh-uh. That doesn't say. I will not perish because I put my faith only in Christ. Not the works I have done. Not the zeal I manifest. Not the money I give. Not all the good works have done because I put my faith in Christ to be my Savior and my only Savior. And when in the article of death, when the last day comes, and I'm going to breathe my last, and somebody asks me, Where are you going? I say, I'm going to heaven. He says, Yes, I understand. Because you've read the Bible, you preach the Bible, you've done all this, you've done all I say, no, wait a minute, not because of the works of my hand. Because Christ died for me, and I accepted that. I held on to that until the end. And I know he and he alone is my Savior. That's how I will get to heaven. The same thing with you. There's no other way. 
and there is no other avenue and there's no other sacrifice and there is no other sin no other qualification that except Christ who died for you and then you believe that and you embrace that and you say yes Lord I believe that whosoever believes in him should not perish thank God you will not perish if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not perish. If you embrace him and hold on to him as your savior, your only savior, you will not perish. If you come and then you say, Lord, I know why I'm suffering. I know it's this, it's this, it's that. But now I give myself completely or reservedly unto Christ. Thank God you will not perish. That's why Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Look at what he said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, even though he is baptized, he that believeth not shall be damned. That's why today you need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe, I accept you died for me on the cross of Calvary and on the basis of that alone, your death for me, your sacrifice for me, and your hanging there on the cross for me on the basis of that alone I know I am saved and the moment you believe on the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and you are not relying on any other thing to save you that salvation will be there at that time that whosoever that's you whosoever that's you there whosoever even tonight whosoever believes in him shall not perish he will write your name in the book of life among the people that have believed and among the people that will not perish that will have everlasting life and you will live forever with the lord in jesus name he says but will have will possess will own eternal life and eternal life will be yours personally is coming your way. I said it's coming your way. And of course, you know, all those people that looked up to and the breezy serpent on the pole, everyone that looked, believing and trusting, everyone lived. And for you tonight, you will live. Sickness will vanish away. All that infirmity will vanish away. All that deformity will vanish away. It will open your blind eyes. It will not stop your deaf ears. It will give strength to your body. And if you are impotent and paralyzed and lame, and you are staying there, you could not try and stop. Once we pray and we mention the name of Jesus, power will be transferred to you right there. You will rise up and walk in Jesus' name. And whatever it is you are suffering from, everyone that looks, lives. Everyone, everyone, everyone. And it's coming your way. It will happen to you. What are you? Miracle is coming. Healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Total freedom from all your infirmities and all your deficiencies. Every, everything as you believe tonight is coming. Are you ready? First of all, there's salvation, there's conversion, there's transformation. That it will take your life and recreate you and remold you and change your life. So that what you were, you will not be again. New life. Where are you? New life. Where are you? Eternal life. Everlasting life. A righteous life. A life that is like the life of Christ that he will transfer unto you. And the power of Satan that makes you to do evil, makes you to think evil, makes you to do what is sinful in the sight of the Lord. All that nature of Satan 
the Lord will take away from you. And then uh, he will put his nature, his goodness, and he will put his righteous life in you. And you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Remember, they came. Remember, they confessed. Remember, they made ready their mind. They were not going to go into those evil things anymore. And then they looked up to the Lord because they couldn't save themselves. And as they believed, and the Lord had called upon them to believe on the sin, on the serpent that is lifted up, the salvation forgiveness came. And Jesus Christ, that that brazen serpent prefigured, has been lifted up on your behalf. Salvation has come. It's bowed. And I is closed. As you surrender yourself to the Lord tonight, and say, Lord, I cannot pretend your word is true. It says, All have sinned. Look at your life. You have not lived the life of an angel, you have not lived a sinless life. Did you feel guilty? condemned because of the sin you have committed if you remain in that guilt the guilt will be like a heavy load that will drag you down sink you down into everlasting punishment hell but as I say today Lord I have sinned I am sorry for what I've done I turn away in repentance and I believe of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, He will forgive you. It's about an eyes closed. You want to come to that eternal life now. You want Him to take your guilt away, your condemnation away. You want Him to so forgive you that even God will not have remembrance of any of the sins you have committed in the past. You raise up your hand, you say, Lord, I am here. I want eternal life. I want everlasting life. I want a guilt-free life. I want you to take all my guilt away, all my condemnation away. Where are you? Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. And as you do that, you signify that you put your faith in Christ, your trust in Christ, and that by His grace, as He forgives you tonight, you will not go back into that sinful life anymore. He'll do it. The compassionate Savior, loving Savior, merciful Savior, where are you? Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. You're raising up your hand. You're saying, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I come for mercy. I come because of your love. I come that I might place all my sins upon you. I come that you will be my substitute. I come to transform my guilt, my condemnation, my weakness, my sinfulness. I come to put that on you, that you might take that away and give me your righteousness. Where are you? Where are you? You are raising up your hand. Please stand up and say, Lord, I come. While you are standing up there, open your mouth and tell the Lord. You see those uh, Israelites, they opened their mouths, they said, we have sinned. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. The Ninevites, they confessed and they turned away from their sin. That's how God had mercy on them and they did not perish. And anyone that is going to have the forgiveness of God, that conversion, that transformation, that salvation, will have to confess, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Forgive me, tell the Lord. Tell your believer 
that Jesus is your savior. Tell him, Jesus is my savior. Tell him, he'll give you grace not to go back to those evil things anymore. He'll grant you the change of heart, change of mind, that you'll not continue with that gang anymore, in those evil things anymore. And the moment you do that sincerely, forgiveness comes. The moment you do that sincerely, eternal life comes. And your name enters into the book of life. And then it tells you, go and sin no more. It doesn't want you to just come and confess and then go back to it again. It gives you grace, strength, power, not to continue in the evil anymore. That's salvation. I'm going to pray with you now. You are standing up. You are going to raise up your hand as I pray. And you accept that this prayer is for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all these who have sincerely considered their lives. They have seen that they have not lived sinless, righteous, holy, angelic lives. They are guilty before you. And Lord, they turn away from their sin and they look up to Christ and Christ alone as their Savior. Lord, I pray, forgive them and save them in Jesus' name. I pray your spirit will bear witness in their heart that now the children of God, the old life, old habits, old sinfulness, Everything passes away and a new life comes to them now in Jesus' name. I pray the power to go out and live a different life, a righteous life, a guilt-free life. Give unto them in Jesus' name. Perform that miracle of salvation. Let there be the witness of the Spirit that it is done. Let them keep on believing in you and not to take their eyes, their focus, their trust, their faith away from you anytime. Thank you, Lord, for that salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Somebody shout another amen. amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They are coming near you there. And those in other locations, the same thing, keep on standing there. The counselors will get to you. And then we'll take, uh, you know, the record of your name and all the details we need there. And then you submit those cards back to the counselors. And then I'll come back and pray for you. Thank God your miracle healing is close near at the door. Are you here, quite bomb? Amen. Cancel us the first down. Write their names in capital letter. Their phone number. The house address. The local government where they come from. To do that quickly. And those online, you are watching online, you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. Visit the line showing this on the screen and fill the form so you, we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Let's be fast. Also, if you are listening to Vi Radio, you just gave your life to Christ. Send your name. You can see the phone number on the, on the screen. The email address via SMS or WhatsApp. Please write their name very clear. Their phone number. 
their home address, make it clear the local government where they came from. Those on online, please do the same in all the countries. Don't go yet. The man of God will soon come. And the power of God will touch everyone. Convert Lorali. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ. More details about this be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thanks. If you have just received your miracle, Let's be fast. Counsel us, be fast. And make sure you give them the special breakfast with Jesus, the card. Tomorrow morning by 7 o'clock, they'll be there and we believe God for a big miracle. Special breakfast with Jesus at IBB, the headquarters close here. Just four poles tomorrow morning. Be fast. If you are finished, you wave. Those online do the same. Those on my right hand side, if you are finished, you wave your hand. Those at the back, over there, my left hand side, if you are finished, you signify. Cancel us, don't forget to give them the special breakfast card. If you are finished at the very back, you signify. Let's be fast. Those at the very back, make sure you attend to them. Write their names in capital letter, then their phone number. Take the addresses very well. By my left hand, if you are finished, can you signify? Those in the front here, if you are finished, can you signify? Let me know. Okay. What about the right hand? Okay. Those at the very back, 
Over there. If you are finished, can you signify? Then you hand over to the coordinators. Let's do that quickly. And those of us seated, be preparing now, praying very soon. The Lord will touch you. Be praying and preparing. Okay. If you are true now, wave your hand, let me know. Okay. God bless you. We'll rise up now. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. Remember, it says as many as looked on that brazen serpent, everyone was healed. And Jesus is greater than that brazen serpent. As it happened to them at that time, it will happen to you. Say, I believe. I believe it will happen. If your eyes are blind, get ready. When you hear the final amen, your blind eyes must open. If you are lame, anything wrong with you, as we pray now, and you believe in that name, healing, deliverance, redemption, all the blessings of heaven that you need, everything will come. Amen. Testimony in your mouth. Amen. Who will give testimony? Raise up your hand and touch the place where you have the problem. <clears throat> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the promise you have given us. We thank you for the assurance you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for the confidence, present confidence that we have, that we look unto Jesus and we believe in the Lord Jesus, our substitute, the final sacrifice, our healer, our redeemer, deliverer. We know you are going to heal everyone that believes in you for healing. Therefore, Lord, we pray now you touch everyone and bring your miracle healing deliverance to them in Jesus name those blind eyes I command you be opened now in Jesus name deaf ears I command you be opened in Jesus name all that tumor all that swelling in your body come out in Jesus name goiter whatever you're not uh, supposed to be there i command you come out in jesus name cancer be healed in jesus name ulcer be healed in jesus name any eternal problem there any pain there i pray the hand of the lord will touch you now be healed in jesus name and I pray, Lord, that everything your people are asking you over here, over there, anywhere we're congregated, congregated together, and those online, manifest your power, manifest your healing, manifest your deliverance, and set everyone free now in Jesus' name. Confirm your miracle. Confirm the healing. Confirm the deliverance. Lord, as we now say the final amen, let there be a performance, a manifestation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. It is done.
In Jesus' name we pray. Before you open your house and your, your eyes, tell yourself, as I open my eyes now, I will see my miracle. Believe that in your heart, your miracle, your healing, your deliverance is there already. Thank you and God bless you.